Are you after a reliable compact car with impressive efficiency, great interior space and a hybrid drivetrain? Well this is the new Honda Jazz, specifically the 2022 X-Style variant and in today's review we'll find out why you need to add it to your list. generation Honda Jazz arrived in the UK in 2020 and it sets itself apart from popular rivals like the Volkswagen Polo, Vauxhall Corsa and Toyota Yaris by packaging a comfortable interior, great passenger space and mild hybrid power into a compact city and family friendly form factor. The model we have here for review is the new X-Style grade that was added to the Jazz lineup in early 2022, bringing with it a revised exterior design and more advanced connectivity features. So is this new top spec model worth the additional premium? And compared to the many popular offerings in the small car segment, is the Jazz the perfect one for you? Let's find out. But before we do, click the pop-up banner up there to head over to the OS3 website and check out our latest offers on the new Jazz. And if you're interested in our in-depth car reviews, click subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Since the latest Gen Jazz's UK launch, it has received numerous awards, including a Red Dot Award for product design, with the jury here appraising its appealing yet robust appearance. Indeed, Honda introduced a new design philosophy with the new Jazz, embodying the Japanese notion of Yunobi, which I've more than likely butchered the pronunciation of. This is the idea that beauty can be found in everything. But let me know if such beauty exudes from this front end. Of course we can see those iconic headlights that are now part of the Jazz and it gives the car a lot of personality. They're LED equipped to standard. You also get daytime running lights and high beam assist automatically switching between high and low beam to give you as much view of the road ahead as possible in nighttime driving conditions. With the high spec X style grades you also get LED front fog lamps. Further adding to the car's personality is its rather short nose which is shorter than you see with a lot of small cars. It also doesn't need much of a grill due to the efficiency of that hybrid system. Just got a tiny air intake below the rather large Honda badge displayed in the center and then you've got a larger air intake along the bottom. It's a rather unique look but yes, you could definitely pick the Jazz out of a crowd of small compact cars. At the side, we get a greater look at the Jazz's flowy design, such as how the A-pillar flows up from the bonnet to create what is an unusually high roof line for a vehicle of this class, but that serves to create lots of headroom inside for passengers, and you'll find out more about that later on. Design-wise, this is complemented by the sharp contour line running from the LED headlights to the taillights, giving the exterior here an aerodynamic quality. 15-inch steel wheels come as standard and they look pretty ugly, so if you want something a bit more exciting, upgrade to the next trim up, which is SR, and you get 15-inch alloy wheels. Upgrading further from that, uh, you get 16-inch alloy wheels in this lovely design. If ride quality is something that you prioritise though, the 15-inch wheels are worth considering as they do a great job at smoothing out road undulations. There's loads of body colour options available. You can really personalise the Jazz to your needs. Fair amount of metallic colours for £600, but if you go with the X-Style variant, you can have a two-tone colour scheme such as this one. We've gone with the crystal red metallic, nicely complementing the crystal black that you find on the roof, door mirrors and side skirts and there's a few other two-tone colour schemes you can choose from. In terms of dimensions the Jazz comes in at 4044 millimetres in length so it's longer than the Toyota Yaris but just a bit shorter than the VW Polo and the Vauxhall Corsa. However it is wider 
and taller than those three rivals to accommodate the extra interior space inside for passengers. The X-Style grade really brings out the sporty appeal of the Jazz from the rear, thanks to the black stylings used for the rear spoiler and the large pane of privacy glass. I also like the LED tail light clusters and the way they merge onto the tailgate itself. Boot space is very important for a small car. We need to know that this compact form factor can accommodate your weekly grocery shop, perhaps even your pet in the back, and that we can fold the seats down to shove in a bike. So let's open up the tailgate. Unfortunately, it's not automatic but we can just use a bit of the old elbow grease. So guys, we're looking at a 304 litre capacity here. Around 50 litres or so is taken up by the hybrid drivetrain compared to its predecessor. But as you can see, still lots of room on offer for your shopping bags. And thanks to the low loading lip and square shaped boot, it's easy to load those heavy and awkwardly sized items like this carry-on suitcase of which you can fit five nice and snug into the back or a large push chair. And that's the only thing you'll be able to fit. You get a protective cover for the boot floor, stopping the material underneath from being scratched or teared. And if you lift it out, which you can, you get access to a couple of hooks to strap objects down while on the go. We can extend boot capacity to around 1,205 litres by folding the rear seats down. They fold in a 60-40 arrangement, and they're pretty easy to fold down from the boot by perching over the parcel shelf and giving them a bit of a push by flicking up those levers. Then you'll be able to easily fit an adult's bike into the back you'll probably have to remove the parcel shelf and the wheel of the bike as well as slide longer objects into the cabin space but there's more heading round to the side we can see that this seat has folded completely flat so there's no awkward gap created in the floor but we can actually create more space in the rear cabin all we do is just fold the seat up and then the bottom of the seat up as well this is what Honda calls their magic seats, and it's very magical indeed. There's now enough room in the back here for a bike, or perhaps that overly large plant that you found at the garden center. It caught your eye, and you have no idea how you're gonna take it home. Well, if you've got a Honda Jazz, you'll be sorted. So guys, if you can't see yourself living without those magic seats, and you'd like to explore options for the Jazz at this stage, then give our team of vehicle specialists a call via the number in the banner below. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions and get the ball rolling on delivery for you. Alternatively, you can click the pop-up banner up there to head over to our website, fill in a quick form, and we'll get in touch at a convenient time for you. So then, practicality, very good. But what about the drive? Is it as fun as other small cars in the segment? Let's get behind the wheel. So guys, Honda have kept the drivetrain lineup for the Jazz nice and simple. There's just one option available. This is the 1.5 litre IMMD hybrid ECVT, and that sounds like absolute jargon, so let's dissect that for you now. So the IMMD is the intelligent multi-mode drivetrain, and this comprises a two-motor system mated to that 1.5 litre petrol engine, and that's assisted by a small lithium ion battery pack to maximise fuel economy as much as possible, and it does so by switching between the engine and battery on the fly. The Jazz is a mild hybrid, so that means you don't have to worry about plugging it in when you get home from work to charge that battery pack but this does mean you can't run off pure electric power as far as you could with a pure plug-in hybrid model. It's a two-wheel drive car as you would expect and that system develops 97 horsepower and 253 newton meters of torque for a pretty impressive 0 to 62 time of 9.5 seconds so that means it's faster than petrol versions of the VW Polo and the Vauxhall Corsa. Corsa. However, don't expect acceleration on tap like you get with a fully electric model. In fact, the Jazz can feel just a tiny bit sluggish when moving off from standstill. It's not too bad, it's just not as good as a fully electric car. But on the plus side, it does a good job at maintaining that momentum as you build up to speed. And that makes it a very easy car to drive around town and to nip into those tight gaps in traffic. Perfect for the weekly grocery shop and dropping the kids off at school. 
So the Jazz is one of the most fuel efficient cars to run in its class. Honda claims that you can achieve up to 61.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. But if we take a look at the trip computer in front of me, it's saying that I'm averaging 65 MPG and that is incredible. You won't see that with any small car, any other small car in this class. CO2 emissions are also pretty low for a hybrid car. Honda claims it outputs around 84 grams per kilometre on the combined cycle. That places this car in the 21% benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. So if you're after a small hybrid car, you don't want to go fully electric, um, but you want to take advantage of tax savings if you're looking for your next company car, then this is a pretty good option. Let's talk about the drive modes. They don't really function like a typical drive mode setup you'd see in a new car, whereby there's a button down here in the center console, you press it and by doing so you'll cycle between three or four different modes like comfort, sport, eco. Doesn't work like that in the Jazz. In fact, the car seamlessly cycles between these modes on the fly. And these are EV drive, whereby that battery pack will be supplying power to the electric propulsion motor. Hybrid drive, whereby the engine will supply power to one of the electric motors, which in turn supplies power to the other. And then engine drive, which just functions like a normal combustion powered car. The car will just continuously cycle between these modes. It will monitor the road ahead and the driving condition to ensure that you're maximizing fuel efficiency as much as you possibly can. What's most impressive about this setup is when the Jazz cycles between these modes, you'll notice that there's hardly any lag. There's no increased engine response and the car doesn't shutter or jutter and that's all rather impressive. Also when the car switches to EV drive mode, you can take advantage of regenerating braking and this is when uh, you put pressure on the brake to slow down the car that otherwise lost energy will be harvested back into the battery pack so we can switch to that EV drive mode more often. The new Jazz added a revised damping system that claims to improve body rigidity. Indeed the suspension here is quite firm so maybe a bit different to what you would expect from other small cars in this segment. That means it's fairly settled when driving at speed on a motorway or a road but on a country road or B road such as this one here, those sharp abrasions and potholes send a bit of an impact throughout the cabin, disrupting the otherwise relaxing drive that this car delivers. I have to say though, the Jazz is perhaps the most comfortable car in the small vehicle segment. We drove it up to the Cotswolds earlier on in the week, so that's like a 75 mile an hour trip there and back. And on the third hour or so, I started to experience some discomfort and that was likely due to how long I've been driving for. Those seats continue to be very, very supportive indeed. So this is a car that's not only suitable for around town driving, but for the occasional trip up the country. Honda claims the improved body rigidity allows for more agile handling. And this is certainly noticeable when you go through tight corners and bends, but this is where the Jazz falls short of some of its rivals. It doesn't grip to the road as nicely as the VW Polo. And due to the car's unusually tall roof line, there's more body lean than you would expect from a vehicle of this class. But thankfully the side bolsters here are nice and prominent and they hold you in place nicely when going through those tight corners. The steering here is very light, making the Jazz easy to manoeuvre around town and into and out of those tight parking spaces. But as a result, it lacks any kind of feel or feedback that doesn't create a particularly engaging driving experience that you would find with equivalent rivals in this class. It's a safe, and predictable drive. In fact, when you first hop into the Jazz, it doesn't take too long to get to get used to how this car drives. And that's definitely an advantage for some motorists. But for me, I'm not finding a lot to get excited about when you get behind the wheel of the Jazz. Both the accelerator and brake pedal feel nice and firm. It's easy to gauge how much pressure you need to give them. And they're lined up nicely with your feet. You won't find yourself accidentally hitting the side material or sitting at an awkward angle. When it comes to noise and vibration, this car is very quiet around town at those slower speeds. If there's charge left in the 
battery, it will set off using the electric power and it will continue to do so at those slower speeds. When the engine needs to kick in at any point, at lower revs, it's pretty unnoticeable and very quiet. It's just when you need to get up to speed on an A-road or dual carriageway where you will notice the engine kicking because those revs are incredibly high. It sounds very coarse and rather unpleasant as it blares away as you try to build up to speed. Wind noise isn't too severe at faster speeds on the motorway. You may notice some bellowing coming from the mirrors, but it's nothing that's too distracting. A pillar width has been reduced by half to improve visibility over its predecessor, and that is certainly noticeable with the new Jazz, and it's one of my highlights here. I love the almost panoramic view you get of your surroundings, and that's thanks to the large windscreen providing an excellent view of the road ahead over the bonnet, large side windows, and also these deeper side side windows towards the uh, front pillars that help you see those uh, tight spots at junctions and roundabouts. But my personal highlight is the view out the back actually is fantastic. You get a great view of what's behind you and that makes it really easy to reverse this car out of a tight gap. As you would expect with a new Honda guys, safety is something you don't have to worry about. When it was tested by Euro NCAP, it scored the maximum five stars for safety, scoring highly in the adult and child occupant safety categories. Indeed, it comes with a wealth of standard safety features, courtesy of the Honda Sensing Suite. And this includes automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist and departure warning, forward collision warning, and traffic sign recognition. There's also some advanced driver assistance features. Adaptive cruise control comes as standard across all trims, and a rear view camera is available with top spec models. The only safety feature that's locked behind a higher spec grade is blind spot monitoring, and this alerts you of any cars approaching from either side when reversing out of a bay. Honda's warranty is pretty standard, it's three years, but you also get up to five years or 90,000 miles of coverage for the hybrid system. This seems like a good opportunity to demonstrate the parking. You also get front and rear parking sensors with the higher spec grades. But let's show you the rear view camera as we stick the car into reverse. As you can see there, it gives us a good view of what's behind us. It's not particularly high definition, but it does the job. And those guidelines do an excellent job at guiding you into that space. The turning circle, by the way, is 10.1 meters. So yes, the Jazz is very easy to maneuver. There's certainly a lot to admire about the uncluttered and simple approach to the front cabin here with a nice combination of the durable hard plastics you'll find atop the dash, around the infotainment screen and down here in the center console and soft touch materials on the doors and the lever wrapped steering wheel that you get with the high spec X grades. I'll start with the seats then, which are exceptionally comfortable. If you opt for SR trims upwards, you get leather seats with gorgeous gray stitching running down the side bolsters and a textured effect on the seat itself. Nothing overwhelmingly incredible, but a nice design. The seat bottoms are thick and they nicely support your weight and they're pretty durable. So you'll find if you eat lunch in the Jazz, you can easily swipe off any crumbs or debris. They won't get into any of the crevices and cracks. Height adjustment for the seats is available with every trim level. Unfortunately, it's not electronic. It's just a manual lever to the side there. But because the Jazz provides a perch driving position, you can pump yourself up pretty high. Let's keep going till we reach the top. There we are. So you can see then, at the very highest point, I've still got a lot of headroom to work with. Legroom isn't as good. For reference, I'm 5'8", and I've got this bench slid back nearly as far as I can, and let's, let's actually do that. So that's as far as you can go. I haven't got particularly long legs, and I'm finding that my legs are not completely stretched out. Uh, my knees are having to be slightly bent there. So if you are a driver who is six foot or over, this could create some discomfort for those longer journeys. The front seats can also be fully reclined. Perfect if you find yourself getting tired on those longer journeys. But another nitpick of mine is that you get lumbar support, but it's not adjustable, it's fixed in place. Didn't really have an issue with this for our longer journey to the Cotswolds, but it would be nicer to perhaps pump this higher up in the seat to scratch that particular pain point. The steering wheel is also fully adjustable, again, manually. It's easy to do though, just toggle that lever on the left-hand side. You can pull it up and down, back and forwards. That allows you to find a very comfortable driving position for you. And with the high spec X grades, you get that leather trim wrapped around it. 
I'm not hugely impressed by this though. It's grippy, but on hot summer days like it, it has been this week, all week, I found my palms sliding down the wheel like so. So they could perhaps have a textured effect on them to just make them a bit more grippy. Behind the steering wheel, we have a seven inch driver display showing you key information that you wanna see while on the move. At the top of this display is a large digital speedometer. And at the bottom, you can customize this to show lots of different data, including navigation, navigation routing, your average fuel economy and media information. Entry level jazz models get a basic five inch touch screen with DAB radio and Bluetooth. But if you upgrade with any of the other trims, you get the Honda Connect infotainment system comprising a nine inch color touch screen mounted to the center of the dashboard that also has Bluetooth and DAB radio plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You'll also benefit from Garmin navigation with X models upwards it's just a shame with these high spec trim levels, you don't get a larger display. That certainly would have been nice. The navigation works decently well though. We used it while traveling up to Cotswolds earlier on in the week, and it shows some really useful lane graphics on the motorway to avoid you turning off at the wrong one. And that helped you alleviate any anxiety but it does lack real-time traffic updates to make this navigation system truly remarkable. The display takes a little bit of time to boot up initially, but once it's loaded all the necessary assets, it works pretty nicely. There's hardly any input lag or delay when swiping between the different menus. The graphics are sharp and the icons are decently large. Uh, the menus don't take too long to load either as you click into them. My issue with it comes with where it's positioned in the car. I would like it to be higher up so it's easier to see while on the go as you do have to glance down and it can sometimes be tricky to hit some of the options on the left hand side of the display while on the go. If you get tired of Honda's infotainment system you can always mirror your smartphone apps onto the display via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It is worth noting that this is a wired connection with those lower spec grades so you have to buy a lead like this one and plug it into one of the USB ports uh, below the screen and this can make for a rather messy look uh, to the center console once you've got your phone plugged in. The only wireless connection available is for Apple CarPlay with the high spec trims. You can't get a wireless connection for Android Auto. Complementing the infotainment is the four speaker setup dotted around the car and it sounds pretty decent actually. It's a bit tinny and compressed at higher volumes, but if you just listen to albums and podcasts at lower volumes, it would be absolutely fine. If you are an audiophile and you need the highest fidelity possible, unfortunately, you're not gonna get that with the bass jazz. You need to look more towards the the cross star variant where you can spec an eight speaker premium audio setup. Beneath the infotainment screen, it's nice to see large physical buttons for the climate controls, none of which are incorporated into the display. The only dial here that's a bit of a faff to toggle while on the go is the one for the air intensity. You do have to reach a bit, which is why I feel this whole dashboard needs to be slightly more angled towards the driver but the dials have a satisfying click as you move them and the buttons do as well. They feel very tangible and high quality. Below that, we've got a couple of USB ports, one for charging your phone and one for connecting it to the display. We've also got a 12 volt socket for plugging in a tire pressure monitor and a nice cubby hole for either your smartphone or the keys. You get a better look here at the ECVT gear selector and it nicely lines up with the different letters unlike other automatic transmissions I've come across. Below that, we've got the electronic parking brake and the econ mode button that you can click to maximize fuel economy even further. You get a single cup holder in the front but it easily holds my large bulky bottle in place and there's another smaller cubby hole behind that. Decent amount of space in the center compartment which you can lift up, goes down fairly far, nothing in it, there's no USB port or 12 volt socket which would have been nice, but it's a great place to store your snacks. If you love your glove boxes, there's not just one, but two inside the Jazz. One up here, perfect for tiny objects, and another one below it, ideal for larger objects, which is very spacious indeed. Fortunately, can't say the same about the door bins. They're ideal for a 250 ml bottle, but not my bulky bottle, which just does not fit in. Luckily, there are little cubby holes up here next to the steering wheel and on the passenger side to the left there. They do fit 
bottles of this size, but you really have to shove them in. Overall then, Honda has done a great job at maximizing the interior space on offer in the front here. It's definitely one of the most spacious small cars I've ever sat in. But let's hop into the back now and see if that's also the case for the rear, or has it been compromised? Let's take a look. You have to bend down quite a bit to get into the back, but once you're in, once you're settled, there is a lot to admire. Legroom is exceptional for a car of this size. I can nearly stretch out all the way and my legs or knees rather don't feel too high up and that's not creating any kind of discomfort. Headroom is also great thanks to the raised roof line. I am miles away from the roof lining there so passengers six foot or over will not have an issue in the back. Indeed fitting two adults in the back here is more than doable and they won't be touching knees and shoulders. All those spaces have been nicely compartmentalized. It's great to see that the leather seat Seats also make their way to the back here and they are just so comfortable. So rear passengers will not find themselves getting restless on longer journeys. The door opens pretty wide, so grandma will be able to hop out with significant ease. And you can also load bulky kids seats into the back fairly easily to attach via the Isofix fittings on either seat. Thankfully, there's no cover on these that you have to pull out and easily lose in the cabin. Just strap them in and you're good to go. Other niceties include this rather large pouch in front of me, goes down pretty far as well, perfect for your bits and bobs. The door bins are even smaller than they are in the front, but you could still fit a 250 ml bottle in there, but that would be the only thing you could fit in there. In this central cluster here, we've got a couple of USB ports. If I'm being very picky, would have been nice for this to be USB-C. Uh, that's what I expect for a new car. And it's a shame that we don't have a foldy downy middle seaty thingy, so we get a couple of cup holders and an armrest. That's something you just don't get with the Jazz. If you need to shove three passengers into the back, what is it gonna be like for the person in the middle? Let's slide on over and find out. Well. From a comfort point of view, it's actually not too bad because I'm getting a lot of back support due to the leather upholstery. Really nice and comfy. The issue is with the size of the seat. Those with a larger rear end are gonna find the seat belt holdings digging into your buttocks, which is quite uncomfortable to say the least. Thankfully, there's not much of a floor as the transmission tunnel is fairly low to the ground, creating a nearly flat floor. To summarize, the Jazz offers a remarkably practical and spacious interior considering its size. So if you are looking for a new car for the growing family, but you want to keep with this compact form factor, then I actually can't think of a better option than the new Jazz. Okay guys, it's time to dive into pricing and there's five trims available. Here are my highlights for each of those trims. Base spec SE trim start from around £20,860. It's a pretty basic equipment list, but you get LED headlights and tail lights, power folding door mirrors and climate controls, all of which you use physical buttons for. Lovely jubbly. SR trim start from £22,375 and you get the Honda Connect infotainment system, wireless Apple CarPlay and lovely leather seats. X trim start from £24,015 and you get a rear view camera, privacy glass for the passenger window and smart keyless entry. This X-Style variant starts from £26,410 and you get those black theme stylings for the roof, mirrors, side skirts and alloy wheels. Last up we have the Crossstar X variant which is exclusive to the Jazz Crossstar model. As such we're not going to go into too much detail here as it deserves its own in-depth review and if you'd like to see that leave a comment below. But some of the highlights of this variant include integrated roof rails, silver coloured door mirrors and water resistant fabric seats. If you need a hand finding your perfect Jazz trim level get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists via the link in the description box below. Okay guys, should you buy, lease or finance the new Honda Jazz? Well, there is an awful lot to love about this compact car. I think Honda did a great job with the revised exterior styling with the X-Style trim. It really broadens the car's appeal. I am super impressed with the amount of space on offer inside that cabin and it's very comfortable to drive for long journeys. Boot space is great, 
considering the size of the vehicle and I love those magic seats. I'd love to see them in more new models. In terms of the drive, I'm impressed by the fuel efficiency and low CO2 emissions considering the current cost of living crisis. So if you're looking to cut your fuel bills with your next car, this is perhaps the best option in the small car segment. Plus, this is a very easy car to drive thanks to the fantastic all-round visibility complemented by the new advanced driver safety systems. Finally, we have to consider Honda's reputation as a reliable brand. It's highly unlikely this Jazz is going to break down on you. But all these great benefits come at a cost. The Honda Jazz is more expensive than the majority of its rivals. Indeed, it costs more outright to buy than the Peugeot 208 and the Volkswagen Polo. And those two cars, plus many of its other rivals, are just more exciting and engaging to drive. Also, if I'm nitpicking, I really don't like the sound of the engine when you put your foot on the accelerator. It sounds very harsh and coarse. And the infotainment system, while functional and good enough for everyday use, certainly isn't class leading. If you'd like to jazz up your lifestyle with your new Honda and get your perfect version secured for delivery, then get in touch with OSV's vehicle experts via the number in the banner below. Or if you're watching on a laptop or phone, click the pop-up banner just up there to book a free call at a time that works for you. You can also click the link down below in the description to head over to the OSV site and browse the latest offers on the Honda Jazz. Thanks for watching today's review guys. If you found it useful, give the video a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with more in-depth vehicle reviews. And once you are subscribed, please do not neglect the notification bell somewhere down there because when you click it, you'll get notified as soon as we upload our next in-depth review. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care. Safe driving.